multiply that by the earnings per share, that would say that this stock could move up from its current price of $48.67 to $72.29 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, tonight we're going to do the stock analysis for Bristol Myers Squibb Company. It's a pharmaceutical company and they are a two star as I do my ratings in three tiers, three stars, which are the most fundamentally sound, two stars, which are the next under that, and one star, which is the least, but still fundamentally sound. So they're a two star. They were at the 52-week low, but they moved up, as you can see with these series of green candles here, sideways a little, and now they've moved back down. So they're at $48.67 a share in the after hours. And Yahoo analysts estimate that they can go up to $58.83 a share in the next 12 months. And shortly I will give you my analysis as to what they can go up to based on P.E. ratio. So let's jump into the analysis of this stock. So Bristol-Myers Squibb Company, the ticker symbol is BMY. So we do not have the 2023 figures for this company yet. But if we look through the 2018 through 2022 figures, we see that in 2018, the low price was $42.26, $42.26 a share, and the high price was $58.61 a share. That's for a percentage increase of 38.69%. Not very high. We've seen better, but it's okay. It's decent. 2019, it was $38.07 a share to $57.61 a share. That's an increase of 51.33%. We have 2020, it was $41.94 a share to $60.94 a share for an increase of 45.30%. In 2021, it was $51.18, $51.18 a share to $65.60 a share. And that was for an increase of 28.18%. And 2022, it was at a low um, $59.05 a share to a high of $79.84 a share. That was for an increase of 35.21%. So we've seen other companies where the increase is more from the low to the high, but this is decent. It's not great. It's not even, I would say, good, but it's decent. We see that the low P.E. ratios over the last five years were 14.04, 18.94. Now, 2020, which was the COVID year, they lost money. So it was a negative number. It was negative 10.51. So we're not going to count that. 2021. It was 16.40, and 2022, it was 20.02. So, if we don't count 2020, which was the COVID lockdown years, and the year where um, Bristol Myers actually lost money, then this is actually the lowest that the PE 
the PE price earnings ratio has been at in those previous five years. Remember, we're not counting 23. We don't have those figures yet. So this would be the lowest the PE has been, 12.35. And we know we usually look at the lowest point that the PE has been at in the previous five years to see how low that stock can go in all probability. Well, in this case, that would be 14.04. And it's already lower than that at 12.35%. So, can it go lower? Yes. In all probability, will it? Um, the probabilities are against it if we look at this five-year history. So now, looking at that, let's look at how much the PE has moved up in those years. Here it moved up five, not counting the numbers after the decimal, I'm just looking before. Here it moved up five, here it moved up 10. These are negative years, so I'm not counting that. Here it moved up six, and here it moved up seven. So let's, let's make it about, let's say it moves up six. So I'm gonna bring our calculator over. And we'll say 12.35, which is the current PE, plus 6 equals 18.35 times the earnings per share. So that would be times the earnings per share, 3.94. 3.94 equals 72.299. So if we were to just look at it by PE ratio, where the current PE ratio is 12.35, it moves up by 6. Multiply that by the earnings per share, that would say that this stock could move up from its current price of $48.67 to $72.29 in the next 12 months. So now that we've seen where it can possibly go, Let's take a look at the fundamentals. And you guys are wanna, gonna wanna stay with this until the end, because after we look at the fundamental numbers for this stock, we're actually gonna listen to some of the chatter. What are people saying about these stocks? I know you guys are familiar with gossip on the streets, what people are saying about each other, but there's gossip in the world of stocks, too. What are they saying about stocks and companies? So we'll see that at the end. But in any event, we're looking at the income statement now. They made $22,561,000,000 million in 2018. And after paying off all expenses, they retained $4,920,000,000. That is for a profit margin of 21.81%, which is pretty good. I would say that's good, but it dropped in 2019. In 2019, they made even more in sales and revenue, $26,145,000,000. However, after paying off all expenses, they only retained $3,439,000,000. That was a profit margin of 13.15%. So, in 2018, their profit margin decreased from 21.81% 
to 13.15%. Now, in 2020, they really jumped. That was the COVID lockdown year. They made 42 billion, 518 million. But after paying all expenses, they actually lost money. They lost 9 billion, 15 million. So they lost 21.20%. 2021, they got back on track. Still continued to increase their sales and revenue. 46 billion, 385 million. But they retained 6 billion, 994 million. Not up to that 21.81 that they started with in 2018, but that was 15.08%, more than they've made since 2019. And then in 2022, they made 46 billion, 159 million. And after paying all expenses, they retained six billion three hundred and twenty seven million. And that is a profit margin of thirteen point seven one percent. So it seems like they're staying in that lower to mid teen area, thirteen to fifteen. But in the beginning in twenty eighteen they was at twenty one point eighty one percent which was great. Now let's look at their return on equity. And we see in 2018, the return on equity was 34.83% with 147.65% debt to equity. That's great. 2019, it dropped significantly. 6.65%. Not horrible, but not great, not even good. Just say it's okay. It's livable. 6.65% with a debt to equity of 151.35. Now, once the debt to equity crosses that 200% line, that's when the return on equity that we're seeing starts to become less reliable. We don't know if those are the actual figures, but and in this case it crossed, but just slightly. So we know in 2020 they lost money. But in 2021, the return on equity was 19.42%. Debt to equity was 203.60%. And in 2022, the debt to equity was 20.33%. The return on equity was 20.33%. And the debt to equity was 211 0.14%. Which would mean that the balance sheet was livable. The current assets exceeded the current liabilities all five years. Not significantly, but They exceeded them all five years. And the total assets exceeded the total liabilities all five years, which is what we want to see in a balance sheet. Now, in terms of dividends, this company paid out $2,613,000,000 in dividends in 2018, $2,679,000,000,000 in 2019, 
four billion seventy five million in twenty twenty. Four billion three hundred and ninety six million in twenty twenty one and four billion six hundred and thirty four million in twenty twenty two. So they are paying dividends and they're paying out I would say quite a bit from two billion to four billion. Change in capital stock are is the company selling more shares of stock, which we don't like to see, or buying back shares of their own stock, which we love to see. And this company bought back more shares of stock for the last five years, for these five years. Three hundred and twenty million in twenty eighteen, seven billion three hundred million in twenty nineteen, one billion five hundred and forty six million in twenty twenty, six billion two hundred and eighty seven million in twenty twenty one, and eight billion one million in twenty twenty two. We're not going to look at current long-term debt because we've already covered that with the balance sheet. But we'll see that this company had, in terms of free cash flow, they had six billion one hundred and fifteen million in 2018, seven billion three hundred and seventy-four million in 2019, thirteen billion two hundred and ninety-nine billion in 2020. Fifteen billion two hundred and thirty four million in twenty twenty one and twenty and eleven billion nine hundred and forty eight million in twenty twenty two now the mo the most significant thing I see about the free cash flow for a company that is paying out dividends is that since the dividends come from the free cash flow. Do they have enough free cash flow to pay out those dividends? And here we'll see. After the company paid out the amount in dividends for those five years, in 2018 they had three billion five hundred and two million left over. 2019, they had 4 billion 695 million left over. 2020, they had 9 billion 224 million left over. 2021, they had 10 billion 838 million left over. And 2022, they had 7 billion 314 million left over. So the one thing I see from this is that on Bristol Myers Squibb can afford to pay you the dividend that they're paying and they can afford to keep increasing their dividend at least for a while they have enough free cash flow to do that and we see their free cash flow sort of exceeded the net income so going into these New Year's, they have leftover money. They have a lot of free cash flow. Now, let's take a look at our statistics for this stock. And we see that their beta is 0 0.34. Now, the beta tells you how volatile the stock is. How much does it move? in comparison to the market in general. If it's over one, it's more volatile than the market and it moves a lot more than the market, whether up or down. And if it's under one, it's less volatile than the market and it moves a lot less than the market. Bristol-Myers Squibb has a beta of 0.34. So it's under the market what 
that's telling me is this stock is not very volatile. It doesn't move around that much. The book value for this stock is $14.26. What that number is supposed to tell you is if this company were to suddenly close overnight, how much money do they have to pay all of their shareholders for each share of stock? We know that the stock is $48.67 a share. This book value is telling me if the company closed overnight, they would only have $14.26 for each share. And that's a PV ratio of 3.41. However, I really personally don't find the book value to be a significant number. And if you want to know why, I have a video on the channel, The Truth About Book book value where you could see why we can't really depend on that number what I more so depend on is whether the company is selling more shares of their own stock every year or they're buying back more shares of their own stock if they're buying back more shares of their own stock and the book value number isn't negative I'm fine in any event the last dividend they paid was 60 cents and they have a dividend yield of 4.91% which is decent for stock. Shares held by insiders. That's the amount of shares outstanding on the market that people working in the company are involved in the company holds. That shares by insiders is only 0.09%. Seems like a small number, but realize that's 0.09% of 203 billion shares. So it's not as small as it seems. And the amount of shares held by large banks, institutions, and so forth are 79.59%. And the reason that's significant is because those shares which are held by professional investors, banks, institutions, and so forth, they are not as fickle where any little thing can cause them to sell. They tend to be holding on more longer term, which makes your investment a little safer. Now, as far as the management of this company, Dr. Christopher S. Berner, PhD, is the CEO and director of Bristol Myers Squibbs. He was just made the CEO in November of 2023. So in other words, we're still feeling out where things are going with this. Competition, it's in the drug manufacturer's general industry, healthcare sector. Now, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and Roach is at the top of the industry. But Bristol-Myers Squibb is coming in seventh. As promised, we're going to go into the gossip concerning this company. Now, realize I pulled this up from the conversations that's being talked about this company in Yahoo Finance. This is not professional analysis. These are things you have to check 
this is just things that people are saying and I'm putting it here just so these are things that you can consider and look closer into. So on December of 2023, December 7th, Rick said, BMY Bristol Myers Squibb has been a classic value trap, but at minus 50, but at minus 50 and a 7.5 times P.E. ratio, plus a 4.6% dividend, it looks like a compelling long-term investment. It trades so poorly because 40% of its revenues are from drugs losing patent protection in the next two to three years. However, it has one of the best diversified pipelines in all pharma across oncology, cardiovascular hematology, audio, autoimmune gastrointestinal diseases. Its pipeline is valued at $25 billion plus, more than enough to offset, what is that, LOE revenue declines. Not sure what that LOE is short for. It will take a while for the story to play out, and there needs to be a shift from growth to value stocks, and the risk of anti-big pharma legislation remains a concern. But the stock is worth over seventy to fifty. But the stock is worth over seventy, so fifty sounds good to me as an entry point at least to start averaging in. On January 9th of 24, um, Tony said, BMY is a buy here. I have been, been doing this for 37 of my 54 years on this plan. Big Pharma got crushed last year. I believe BMY was down over 36% in 2023. BMY will earn over $7 per share for the next two to three years, even considering their waning pipeline revenue three. Let me move this a little closer so I can read it better. This means that we are trading at a P of 7.5. For we are also close to a 5% dividend yield. Not bad when rates will likely fade this year. BMY has been patiently buying companies in the past year. Heard it was like $115 billion in order to make up for the pipeline fall. I totally realize that this does not mean that these new Purchases will be able to absorb the pipeline full, but the people that are deciding and making decisions on buying these multi-billion dollar companies have been beyond patient and likely know these purchases inside out. There are multi-billion dollar buys, so they have a heads up on their future, put in layman's terms. I just repurchased 1,200 shares of BMY at $51.54. Today would like to purchase another 800 lower to get it close to my 5% max in any stock. Sold it last year for a loss around here for tax purposes. I honestly think the risk versus reward is great at these levels. Lots of patient and very smart scientists make me feel comfortable that they will hit on a big winner here in the future. And D.B. Turner, in January 23rd of 2024, said, Lots of layoffs at the company, so the new, new CEO is putting his mark on the company, buying small farmers, basically overpaying and layoffs with people being replaced, workers in India. 1990 called and wants its outsourcing model back. Assuming that's a joke. 
Anita, oh, it's nice to see a woman investing. I know there are women um, interested in investing, but it seems to be a lower number than men. I, I want more women getting involved. In any event, Anita said on July 27th of 2023, well, we were promised new drugs to reload the revenue streams and counter patent productions and generics. So far, the pipeline is getting worse, not better. CEO is stepping down, taking money with him. We should get clawbacks for the broken promises. Then, January 5th of 2024, Anita said, stock up today after yesterday's ex-dividend. This will be a nice 10% return soon from a month ago, $49. I think we may hit 55 by January 19th, option expiration. Went long at the 49, wrote cover calls for January 19th, got 20 cents and yesterday's dividend of 60 cents. As you guys know, if you check me out on this week's option picks, I don't believe in short-term op options like a week or two weeks. I like to go out to three or four months. In any event, gold royalty on November 20th of 2023. We need an activist to shake things up and possibly force a sale. That said, not many can afford to buy it. Hard to have confidence in this management team. This is just reality. Best to slash cost and hope some of the past research and development actually comes through. And lastly, we have Charles on May 24th of 23. Make, makes no sense that healthcare would be falling. It's needed no matter what happens. So that's some of the chatter concerning Bristol Myers that I found in the conversation page on Yahoo Finance, guys. In any event, that's the analysis for Bristol Myers Squib. And you guys have a great night. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.